One of the questions for Ask Don and Diane Shett concerned special forces around the world that I worked with, which was my favorite ones. And uh, they were all my uh, favorites. Uh, there's always a swag to uh, special forces around the world, no matter if it's the Koreans, the Aussies, the Thais, the Brits, the French, you know, just Germans. I've worked with all of them, but favorite, I, I loved them all. The ones I got in the most trouble with, Norwegians. Those guys, holy shit. The uh, Norwegians, Jaegers, uh, their uh, brand of seals are uh, in a very isolated place in Norway. Those guys get to do about whatever they want. Nobody, nobody fucks with them. And you go up there and it's just let your hair down time. So the Norwegians would come to us in the summertime. They would come out to SEAL Team 2, and we would entertain those clowns for a month. And then in the wintertime, we would go up to uh, Norway and work with them, and they would entertain us. It wasn't a fair uh, switch. When the Norwegians came, all they wanted to do was go to Puerto Rico and lay out in the sun because they're all pasty anyhow and buy shit out of the exchange. They weren't up for doing anything. It was vacation for them. And it pissed us off a little bit. We had a great, we found other shit to do, trust me. But uh, we were away from our families and, you know, down there uh, entertaining those guys. So when they didn't want to work, at least it passed the time a little bit for us when we were doing some diving, training, shooting stuff. When we went to Norway, it was quite the opposite. Uh, Norwegians are all born on skis. They're just excellent skiers, and they loved beating us up on skis. They loved taking us out on these uh, extreme death humps and these extreme cold weather operations and anything else those clowns could think of. Uh, but we certainly had some good times with them. I'm not bad-mouthing the Norwegians. I love them. Uh, one of the cool things about going to Norway uh, was they had a, a, a bar called the Jaeger House. It was just their bar for the Norwegian Jaegers. And the first thing you noticed about the Jaeger bar was that everything in it was behind plexiglass. The TV had a plexiglass thing over it that hung on the wall. All the windows had plexiglass over them. Uh, all the remote controls, uh, radios were in waterproof bags. And it was immediately noticeable uh, that, and then we, we found out why. When you finish drinking a beer at the Jaeger house, you just throw it and smash that bottle up against whatever you're going to throw it at, be it the TV, the windows, the, the walls. Uh, they had a beautiful bar and a nice bullet hole in it from uh, one of the guys and uh, fires. And just we just went absolutely nuts in that place. So we would uh, deploy to Germany and then part of the trip uh, you know, was to, you know, we'd, we'd go all over Europe, uh, but we would coordinate with the Norwegians, and they wanted us to bring the booze. So I would coordinate, uh, you know, with their uh, senior enlisted guy over there and coordinate all the booze, and the Norwegians had all the beer. And they would give us these beer tickets, and we would give them, the, you know, the, the booze. We made an even uh, trade for the thing, and we just went nuts. Just nuts. I mean, it's cold weather. Something about the cold weather just really brings out your bad side when you've really, really been working hard. And we referred to that night, uh, one, one night out of many, as the uh, night of broken glass. We went apeshit in that place. It, the mood, sometimes the party mood just strikes you. And all I remember is just about everybody in that place was bleeding from some part of their body, from broken glass that was flying all over the place. There was so much glass and so many bottles broken uh, that it even pissed the Norwegians off. We would go in there in the morning after one of these things, and, you know, they didn't care. You know, they would clean it all up, and it would just look good. The place just stunk like rotten beer. But uh, going in there that morning, it... It looked like a flipping landfill. Something just terrible had happened in there. And it was, it was so bad, it pissed the Norwegians off. They were like, man, you guys are really out of control. Ugh. So uh, we'd, we'd have a great time in Norway. And uh, 
partying with those guys, really hard guys, really, uh, really, really solid, good dudes. And then the uh, Norwegians would come to us in the summertime. So here the, here the Norwegians come. It's our turn to return the favor. And they come to SEAL Team 2, and of course we're going to Puerto Rico with them. And Master Chief Tom Keith was a sea daddy of mine. And a sea daddy is a uh, mentor in the Navy. And I learned an awful lot of stuff from Tom Keith. I just, res just the, the respect I had for that guy and still have. Uh, Tom was an old, uh, one of the 300 Vietnam vet guys. You know, 300 combat missions in Vietnam puts you at a milestone of, in a separate club from others. Oh, multiple deployments over there. Some infamous pictures of uh, Tom in Vietnam. And uh, all the time I spent with Tom, I have seen him get mad three times. And each time, I was so thankful that it was not directed at me. That guy launched VC, Viet Cong launched, Tom launched, and there wasn't anything anybody was going to do about it. You just ran for cover. Tom, in training, when he was training Master Chief, had a, uh, a trash can in his office. And right above it was a note, if you spit in my trash can, I'll punch your face. And he meant it. <laughs> he, didn't like, he didn't like dipping people just spitting in his trash can. Um, Tom had a real dislike for the Norwegians. Tom was uh, Mr. Puerto Rico. Tom uh, Pinheiros Island was named Camp Keith. We would do all our shooting and demolitions down there. Uh, Tom just spent so much time. And after he retired, he went down and ran a dive shop. And he owned and... Now, Tom was just Mr. Puerto Rico. So Tom is going to go to Puerto Rico with us. And he's the master chief. I'm the platoon chief. Tom is just kind of attached to our platoon. And I think the only reason Tom went down there was to fuck with the Norwegians. Well, I know it was. And the Norwegians knew it too because Tom wasn't a very warm fellow to uh, people like that. And uh, so we went down there and Tom turned loose on the Norwegians. They weren't catching a break from anything. And the Norwegians were smart enough to know he's not the guy to fuck with. Maybe we better train a little bit. And maybe we better train a little bit harder uh, to make up for it. So we did a lot of diving and the shooting and demolitions and all that stuff. And we had a great time in the sun and they got to go to the commissary and we got to party and do everything else uh, like that. But, but Tom was on them. At the end of it, uh, the few weeks we were down there, Tom starts to warm up to the Norwegians because they're, they're working hard. Really warm up to them. Tom's having a good time with them. Tom's socializing with them, talking to them, you know, telling war stories. You know, Tom's just part of the club instead of steely-eyeing them, you know, from a distance and watching everything that they do and just jumping their asses when they did. So Tom being a good guy decides he is going to take all of us out on one of our final nights in Puerto Rico to his favorite restaurant. And again, Tom is Mr. Puerto Rico. He knows everything, everyone, everything. So he takes us to this big seafood restaurant. Uh, there's at least a platoon, a platoon, you know, 15, 18 Norwegians. There's uh, 16 of us and Tom, there's a lot of us there. And when we get through the door of this restaurant, all the waiters start coming out. They're running in the back. They're telling everybody that Tom's here. Here come all the cooks and the managers and the waitresses. They're all hugging Tom. Tom, Tom. They hadn't seen him in a while. Tom, 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 Tom. And Tom's just having a great time. You know, he's the bell of the ball down there. Everybody, the training had all been conducted safe and successfully. So Tom's just ecstatic. So they put us up on this big-ass long table, 30 of us. And I'm sitting across from Tom. You know, I'm the, I'm the platoon chief. Tom's a you know chief, and I'm sitting across from him. And at the ends of each of the table, there's a Norwegian, just a regular knucklehead Norwegian sitting at the ends of the table. And the Norwegians were commanded by a lieutenant, just like our platoon was. We had a lieutenant, but they also brought along a Navy Norwegian Intel captain, a four striper. I don't even know why the hell he was there. He was there just to get in Puerto Rico and have some fun and get some rays. So 
the meal is going beautifully. The beers are flowing, the drinks are flowing, the food is just great. We're all just, you know, it's just a chatterbox of activity, you know, after all. We're just all big buddies, us and the uh, Norwegians. And as I'm taking a bite of food, out of the, I hear the Norwegian at the, uh, at the left side of me, at the far end of the bar, yell something at the table, yell something to the other end. And as I'm taking that bite of food, I couldn't understand it because it was in Norwegian. I, out of the corner of my eye, I see that Norwegian pick up a bottle of Heinz ketchup and reared back. And it, it was like it happened in slow motion as I saw that thing and went, no. He throws this, now there's 30 of us at this big long table. He throws that bottle of ketchup to the Norwegian at the other end who's got his hands held up and that ketchup bottle went right between his drunk hands and smashed all over the floor and went all over these two girls back and I mean all over them just splattered glass and ketchup went all over them nicely dressed girls and that fucking Tom Keith went absolutely fucking nuts he was like a ballistic missile coming out of a submarine. He got up and he just went on a fucking tirade laced expletive of just this, ah. And Tom had the, uh, back in the dude, he was that Vietnam vet master chief. That pissed him off, it embarrassed him. It just, he lost his fucking mind. If this is so bad, I don't care how I look after this, I'm gonna get every one of you sons of bitches. No, he, fucking snaps and in this middle of this tirade of uh, expletives about Norwegians and fuck you and you get back on an airplane and you go the Norwegian lieutenant figures he better pull rank on Tom he's a lieutenant in Norway uh, Tom's an enlisted guy in America he better pull rank on Tom and defuse the situation and he stood up and Tom went straight down his throat you fucking Norwegian get your fucking ass on that fucking airplane and I'm just sitting there across from him going, oh my, check please, check please, taxi, taxi. Like just wanting to get the hell out of there. You know, like, oh my God, this is so bad. Uh, and he shuts that Norwegian lieutenant down. The next worst thing that happens is my lieutenant, who outranks Tom in America as Lieutenant Master Chief, decides he's gonna shut Tom down. He's gonna stop this. And he gets up out of his seat and he, all he got out of his mouth was, Master Chief Keith, and he went straight down. You Naval Academy graduate piece of shit, motherfucker, I'll kill all you cocksuckers. You know, just insane. And uh, so the worst, next to the worst mistake was the Norwegian captain. Just this little pudgy, cheeky, soft-handed clown uh, decides that, well, the two lieutenants didn't have it. I'm a four-stripe Navy captain. I'm going to shut Keith down, and it went horribly bad for him. Keith went straight down his fucking throat. Uh, and then Keith took both his fists and just set them on either side of his plate of food, and he just sat there and stared at that thing, just shaking, going, and we're, we got to get the hell out of here, you know. We, so we're trying to get the, the check paid and everything else and get the hell out of there. And uh, we're headed to the door. And Tom is just so rigid. His hands are still at his side and his teeth are clenched. And I'm right behind him. And out of nowhere, I see this hand come across my shoulder headed for his. And it's the Norwegian that threw the bottle of ketchup. And he is about to apologize to Keith. And I just saw that hand coming and I went, no, as he touched him. And Keith went in apeshit on him. Ah. It ruined the, the night. We should have thrown that bottle of ketchup. So we exchanged plaques at the end of the courses. The Norwegians give us one. We give us one of theirs. And we had took a, a ketchup bottle label. That was their plaque, a Heinz 57 ketchup bottle bottle label that we put on their plaque and, and gave to them oh god it was the uh that was during the summer and over the winter uh, we deployed and we went to uh, bosnia and we were on kind of a thankless thing in bosnia it was very important but it was kind of a thankless thing 
and we were on a two bear limit. You could have two bears a day, but we were kind of on call for. And all of a sudden, we are living in these hooches outside. It's snow, it's the middle of winter, Bosnia is full of uh, snow and shit. Uh, and the doors burst open. We're in a NATO compound, so all the Dutch are there and the French are there, the Germans. Are there. Just every, everybody's in this big NATO compound. It was really kind of cool. If you didn't like what the Americans were serving for chow, you just went over to see what the Germans were eating, or the Dutch or the French, and you just eat, eat there. And even that got old after a few months. And in comes the Norwegians. Here they all come. And we let our hair down a little bit with those guys. That two bear limit kind of just went out the window just a little bit with those guys. So we're just going to be cool about it. So we hadn't seen each other in a long time. So we're starting to party it up in our little hooch. And uh, it got a little out of control. A couple of guys went outside into the snow and were wrestling. You know, this is midnight and shit. They're out there wrestling and carrying on. Well, the colonel who's in charge of this whole operation is in a big building next to us. We had taken over this hotel. And he's up on like the third deck of this building. And we wake him up. And so the dumbass Norwegians come back inside with our, our gang of young guys and shit. And I mean, we're, we're, we're just wound up. We're not really, really liquored up, but we're just having a good time. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot. Da, 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 da. And the door bursts open and I look over and it is the flipping Colonel. He's a special forces Colonel. He looked the part too. He was just a, a, such a solid officer, such a great guy. He was in his boxers and nothing but jungle boots on. He had his underwear on, no shirt, and his feet just stuck in his jungle boots. And he was standing in the snow looking at us in there. And he looked right at me. Guess who turned out to be the senior guy present? And he shuts the door. And as soon as he shuts the door and I saw him, I went, oh my God, I turned around, just make this go away. I didn't just see him. And I'm just going, oh shit, man, shit, shit, shit. What I didn't notice when I turned around is one of them fucking Norwegians followed him and was fucking with him the whole way back to his room. What right do you have to break up our party? And who do you think? He doesn't know who this guy is. What right do you have? And he goes all the way up, follows him all the way up to the third story of that hotel. And the colonel just slams the door in his fucking face. Next morning, two things happened. The first thing was the Norwegians sitting in Bosnia. They were the first Norwegians allowed into Bosnia. They were they had a, a job to do. They were out. They spent a total of about seven hours in Bosnia, and they were out for the rest of their lives. Now the colonel threw them out of country, and then he called me in on the carpet. And uh, I thought, oh boy, this is it, man. Boy, am I in, in shit for this one. And uh, he goes, I've been there myself. Senior Chief, I've been there myself. How about you don't let that happen again? Like, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. He goes, get get out. Don't let it happen again, bro. Get out. So, uh, yeah, really, really good guy. So uh, the Norwegians, oh, the shit we uh, got into with them, and they come down here and go up there. So if you guys dig them, I'll keep telling more special forces stories. I haven't even got started on the Australians yet. Or the Brits. Or the Koreans. Or the Thais. Or the Germans. Holy shit. What the shit we did with Germans. Good times. Really good times. Good memories.